Hi there and welcome to another screencast where we're going to do a live example here of proving that a function is a linear transformation. Again, we're going to look at a transformation that involves something other than just the usual RN. So recall first of all that S uh, we defined previously to be the set of solutions to the differential equation y double prime plus 4y equals 0. And we're going to define a function called f that goes from just the regular old R2 space, that's the space of all vectors that have two entries in them that are real numbers, and that's going to map uh, R2 into s, and I'm going to define it by the following rule. I'm going to set f of the vector ab, let's put parentheses around that, f of ab is going to be defined as a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x. Okay, That's how my function is going to work. Again, uh, this is a legitimate function between these two sets because I'm plugging in a vector in R2 and I'm getting out a, a, a function here that does actually belong to S. We saw in an earlier screencast that uh, any linear combination of cosine 2x and sine 2x will be a solution to this differential equation up above. So this actually does accept two-dimensional vectors from R2 as inputs and spits out uh, actual solutions to that differential equation as outputs. Output. So as a function, this is all well and good, but is it a linear transformation? So let's walk through uh, the steps here. I need to show two things to show this is a linear transformation. First of all, that vector addition is preserved, and second of all, that scalar multiplication is preserved. Let's start with vector addition. So to show that vector addition is preserved, I'm going to choose two uh, random vectors out of R2. Okay, let's call them u and v. Uh, so u, let's give it uh, components a, b, and V, let's give it components uh, C and D. And these are just any two vectors in R2. I'm not specifying what the A, B, C, and D have to be, so that could be anything. And so I want to show in this uh, phase of the proof here that F of the quantity U plus V is equal to F of U plus F of V. So the way I'm going to show this is just to compute the left-hand side in one stage and then the right-hand side in a second stage and just show that, make it clear that they're equal to each other. So I think I have enough room on this slide to do uh, part one uh, just below here, so let's go down and do that. Okay, so what is f of u plus v? Well, let's compute the inside first. u plus v, what goes inside this f, uh, would just be adding these two vectors together. So that would be the vector uh, a plus c and the second component would be b plus d. So if I put that vector into f, uh, I'm going to get this function out. It's going to be a plus c cosine 2x plus b plus d sine 2x. Okay, so there is the result of stage one. Now let's go over in, in part two of this and first uh, put u and v into f and then add them later and see what we get here. Okay, so here we are going to put those two things into f first. So f of u, that is f of the vector a plus b, or a comma b, I guess. And that is a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x. And f of v is similar. f of v would be f of the vector cd. And that would be c cosine 2x plus d sine 2x. And now we're going to add those two things together just to get the point here. So f of the quantity u plus v, I'm sorry, that's not right. I've already done f of u plus v, so I'm going to do f of u plus f of v. That's the thing I haven't done yet. So just to add these two guys together, and what you notice here is I'm going to be adding sort of like terms here, the cosine stuff together and the sine stuff together, and that will give me a plus c cosine 2x plus b plus d sine 2x. Okay, So that's the end of stage 2. And I noticed just looking back that f of u plus f of v is indeed equal to f of u plus v. So we are all good in that uh, sense. And so uh, vector addition is preserved. Let's go over to a new slide and do scalar multiplication. Okay, So again, we're letting, uh, we're just going to choose for scalar multiplication, we're going to choose a random vector out of R2, multiplication. 
and that's an A right there. So uh, let's let U be just any old vector out of R2, give it components A, B, and then K is just going to be a scalar. And what I want to show here is that uh, F of K times U is the same thing as K times F of U. And again, uh, I'm just going to kind of think of this in two stages, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Compute them in isolation from each other, and then make it clear they're equal. I think I have enough room on this slide to do all of that. So here's uh, stage one. First of all, what is k times u, the thing I'm plugging into f? Well, that would just simply be uh, the vector k a k b. Now, if I put that into f, f of k u, that would be uh, I'm going to take k a times cosine 2x plus kb sine of 2x. All right, and that's the end of part one. Uh, let's go over and I'll switch colors here and let's do part two, and that's k times f of u. So I need to do f of u first, and then, as we know, that's gonna be a cosine 2x plus b sine 2x. And if I now calculate k times that, I think you can see already what I'm going to have here. I'm going to have k times all this stuff up here, and just distributing the k's through gives me this, ka cosine 2x plus kb sine 2x. And as you can plainly see here, these two guys are equal. And so not only does the function f preserve vector addition like we saw earlier, it also preserves the scalar multiplication. So that makes f a linear transformation. It kind of makes sense that this should be a linear transformation, and we might shouldn't really be surprised that R2 and this uh, set of uh, solutions to that differential equation, y double prime plus 4y is 0, uh, should have a pretty strong correspondence. Because you think about it, where do we actually use the cosine and the sine here? We didn't use any trigonometry or really any derivatives here. The cosine and the sine were just sort of uh, placeholders. They're kind of like the places inside a vector, uh, the first and second component. They're merely uh, locations to put a number. And it's even pretty similar to what we might call P1. P1 would be the set of all polynomials of degree 1 or less, the set of all linear functions, uh, things that look like you know 5 plus 3t. Uh, those uh, have two slots for numbers as well. So all these uh, vector spaces that we're looking at are pretty exotic sometimes, but when you get down to their basic structure, they have an essential structural similarity that makes them not that different from each other in the end. And in later uh, classes, actually, not in later videos for uh, this coming up class, we're going to really try to dig in and exploit those similarities between these seemingly far apart vector spaces. Thanks for watching.